Hey, ah, uh, 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 it's it's gone. Yep. Before we get into the topic, yeah, just, just letting it out there. Some people wanted it gone, some people didn't. But for the longest time, those of you who liked the beard, you got to see me with the beard. And now those people who wanted me to shave it off, they have a period of time where it'll be gone. Just trying to satisfy everyone here. Anyway, can we at least keep the comments a little bit on topic today? That would be great. And leave all the beard jokes on Twitter. I'd, I'd gladly hear them all there. But let's talk about the next gen Apple Watch. So I've actually been thinking a lot about this. We've got the Apple Watch Series 3, which I've been loving, by the way. I feel like Apple has really, really perfected this generation, okay? We've got the same design elements since 2015. In terms of design, there's practically been no changes. I think it's safe to say that. I mean, there's the red dot. There's the slightly wider build between the Series 2 and 1. You got a little bit wider speakers on the Series 3 and extra microphone hall. Everything's pretty minor, okay? Everything's looked about the same, and I've really enjoyed using it. And a lot of the ideas I thought about adding to the the Apple Watch have mostly been like, yeah, I mean, they could do that, but really would it matter? Back before the Series 3 came out, I had the ideas of like implementing Touch ID into the display so that instead of entering your passcode when you put it on, you can just scan your fingerprint. But now I've gotten to this habit where every time I unlock my iPhone 10, as soon as your iPhone unlocks, if you didn't know this, it will unlock the Apple Watch that's on your wrist. I find this to be incredibly intuitive. It's how I start my morning every single day. I wake up, my watch is sitting there on its charging nightstand. I pull it off, put it on, then I grab my phone unlock it with Face ID, which works well in the dark. And by the way, Face ID still works well, even though I shaved my beard off. I shaved it and Face ID still worked flawlessly. I was impressed because I'm sure as many of you have already commented, I look like a 14 year old now, right? So you'd think Face ID would lose it. But anyway, I think the process of just putting on the Apple Watch and then unlocking your phone and having the Apple Watch unlocked that way is so much smoother and more intuitive that either trying to figure out a way to implement Touch ID under the display, which Apple had no success with on the last iPhone, or trying to even implement Face ID onto the Apple Watch, I think is just so much money and so much investment into something that's really not done very often. Like I can understand it on an iPad, on an iPhone, on a MacBook. You open that a lot and you unlock it a lot. The Apple Watch is different though because it's always on you. I mean, how many times do you take off your watch in the middle of the day? And how many times do you have to unlock it for that? I mean, for me, usually I put it on once and unlock it with my phone and then I'm good for basically the whole day. Maybe something comes up for some reason. I wanna show it to someone. When I take it off, all I do is put it back on and unlock my phone, as most people are unlocking their phone all day anyway. So all of the more advanced forms of security don't really seem to be necessary for me on the Apple Watch because you need an iPhone to operate it. And for countless years, I feel like I've always talked about why I don't think you need a camera on the Apple Watch. I'll try to sum it up for you very quickly. It's basically because there's no good angle to do it. Naturally holding up your wrist, the camera would be looking up your nose. Simply grab your phone, open the camera, the front facing one, put it on your wrist, and you have an idea of what your watch's camera would look like. It's not very good. And then to get it at a regular angle, it becomes tedious. And the camera that they could fit on there is always going to be horrible. So it's just not worth it. I don't know why you would. There's some third parties that have put them in the watch bands, but again, it's just unnecessary. And another big request I had with the Series 3 that didn't end up happening was smart bands. I thought that Apple was working on some way to measure glucose levels with smart bands that when you slid them into the Apple Watch, they would connect to the Apple Watch and potentially power those bands. Or you could have a smart battery band and with lithium embedded into the watch band you could expand your Apple Watch's battery life which I thought would be pretty cool. But then of course a lot of commenters brought up that storing lithium into a flexible band like that is not very intuitive. It would make the band very bulky. Apple would likely be against that because it wouldn't look very nice and watch bands are more about fashion than function. So once again I'm kind of stumped when people ask about watch OS 5 or what's the next Apple Watch gonna have. You really have to dig deep. I mean like I said in my iPhone 10 review every Apple product that's coming out from here on out kind of has to resemble the massive changes that were brought to the iPhone 10. But the thing is, a lot about the iPhone 10 was taken from the Apple Watch. Just think about it for a second. You got the same size bezel all the way around. It was kind of the first time Apple was implementing OLED technology into their smart tech. You had tapped awake, which we have now. And of course you have a lot of functionality built into those side buttons instead of having a home button. So what my theory is, is that for the next generation Apple Watch, if Apple really wants people to get excited for it, they're going to have to make it look different. I don't think that the next generation Apple Watch can really be too much about functionality because we've kind of got that covered. I've had great battery life. You know, on the Series 2, it could easily go two days. With the Series 3, if you're connected to your phone, it can easily go for three days. As my friends who also have the Series 3 non-cellular have mentioned, they're using it, they're texting with it, they're using Siri, and it can still last them three days without charging. So I think battery life Apple's pretty satisfied about. Being able to leave the phone and still use it has been really great. I love that feature. The GPS built 
built in, the calorie tracker, the display is really bright. So my conclusion is that if Apple wants people to get excited and to buy the Apple Watch Series 4 when that comes out next year, it's gonna have to look different. They're gonna have to change the look of the device itself. And pretty much the only rumor we have going for this watch so far is the implementation of micro LED, which for those of you who don't know, is an up and coming technology that really hasn't been implemented onto a single device yet. And I think the Apple Watch would be a great starting place because you know, that device doesn't do too much. The displays are very, very small. And the reason we haven't seen micro LED implemented that well is because it's very hard to manufacture. So if we have a huge company with a ton of money like Apple trying to adopt a new display technology, doing it on very small screens like Apple Watch 42 millimeter and 38 is probably a good start because it means the displays the companies would be making at Foxconn and around that neck of the woods would be very, very small. So it'd be kind of a good prototype phase. And I should probably give you a little bit of a rundown on micro LED. I was kind of confused about it. I read up on it a bit and there's not a lot of science I can tell you because I don't really understand it very much. But what I can tell you is the facts about it. What people are saying about micro LED is that you can get displays that are brighter than OLED. You can get them thinner than OLED and you can get a wider color gamut that also uses less power. So when I read that, I was like, so we basically have discovered display technology that makes OLED super outdated. And apparently the reason they call it micro LED is because there are literally microns between each pixels. These are incredibly difficult to make and it means that pixel density would be even higher. So if this is possible, and I think that Apple has a pretty good track record of figuring out how to produce things in time, given that the iPhone 10 was a very difficult product to make and we're already seeing iPhone 10 shipping times go to one to two weeks. People were not expecting that. And analysts are saying that this is not because demand for the iPhone 10 is going down. Demand has stayed the same and in fact increased, especially on Cyber Monday. And yet the factories are getting more and more efficient at producing these things. So I think Apple with all their money and power and influence in the factories over there in China are able to say, okay, this new display technology is going to make things really, really better. It's very, very hard to produce. They're very, very expensive to produce, but we need to figure out an effective way of doing them. And I think similar to OLED, how Apple kind of stuck their toe in the water with OLED technology with the Apple Watch in 2015, perhaps the Series 4 Apple Watch could be their toe in the water for micro LED, which of course would mean, first of all, that the Apple Watch could be thinner. It means the display takes up less space and requires less battery. Of course, the display could be brighter and the display could be even more vivid. I think it's pretty fine as it is because it's, you know, a watch. You're not really viewing many videos or pictures on there. But at the same time, a pixel per inch of under 400 is becoming a little bit dated. Even I can look at the iPhone 8 and be like, yeah, we, we can crank it up. And I think with this new technology, we can finally get a noticeable refresh in design on the Series 4, which is what this product lineup desperately needs. You've got the functionality of it down. I think that the next generation doesn't really need more features, more independence. All it really needs is to look better. It could be thinner. If possible, maybe even the bezels could shrink. I would love to see that. I would love to see the glass meet more uniform with the aluminum around the edges or stainless steel, depending on which one you get. As long as we can still keep our watch band attachments, that's kind of important to me. But if you look at your Apple Watch and where the watch bands attach, you can understand that the Apple Watch can get a lot thinner and still keep all of our pre-existing watch bands. Because what I would absolutely hate is if they introduced a new one and said, no, you have to buy the second generation watch band attachment, making all of my old watch bands useless. That would kind of suck. So don't do that, Apple. But I think you really should push micro LED because it sounds like this technology is the next generation. It's what we're going to be seeing on future smartphones and tablets. And the Apple Watch is a great experimental product to see, can we do this? Is it possible? Because Apple Watches don't sell as much as iPhones and because the displays are way, way tighter, it means that the square inches of micro LED displays you'd have to make are definitely not as high. So if you want to make a mass produced product and be the first company to introduce micro LED, I think the Apple Watch Series 4 would be a great time to do it. But anyways, what do you guys think of the Apple Watch Series 4? Is there something you'd like to see added? Extended battery life? I can get that. But at the same time, micro LED could help expand that battery life. It uses less power. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one. But my beard will not.